In this video, I'm going to review uh, a queuing Monte Carlo example um, where there is unloading at a dock. Uh, there's only one unloading dock and there's trucks that are arriving. Um, I'm going to have the trucks arrive at an average rate of five per hour and this, this arrival rate is going to follow an exponential probability distribution. Uh, there's going to be a three-person crew that unloads each truck. Uh, the average time for one of the crews to unload a truck follows a truncated normal distribution with a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 3, uh, with a minimum time at 1 minute. The estimated cost of operating each truck is $40 per hour. Each person in the unloading crew is paid $11 an hour. The unloading dock is operated 8 hours each day. We're going to simulate 100 days of operation and calculate our total daily cost. We're going to do this n times. Uh, we're going to do it actually 200 times in this example. Um, and get the expected cost per day for this operation. Okay, so our service times are going to follow a normal distribution with a mean of 9, standard deviation of 3, and a minimum of 1. Uh, our trucks are unloaded following an exponential distribution. Now, um, they are um, unloaded, there are 5 trucks unloaded per hour. Let's have a look here. So an average rate of five per hour. Note, uh, all of the rest of the um, times here are given in minutes, nine minutes and three minutes. Um, so what I'm going to do instead of having five per hour, I'm gonna switch that to how many that would be per minute. It will be a small amount. So it's five per hour divided by 60 to switch this to minutes. So that would be 0 0.083 repeating of a truck unloaded per minute. Okay, we know that there are three um, members of the crew. Uh, labor costs are $11 per hour. The unloading dock is operating eight hours per day and the trucks cost $40 per hour. Okay, now, um, now we're going to uh, start setting up our model here. So time between arrivals. We're going to let that follow the um, exponential distribution here, where we're going to do negative 1 divided by our number of trucks, that's our mu, um, times by the lawn of rand. That will simulate that exponential distribution with that mu of 0 0.083. Okay. And I'm going to lock the K5 and copy that down. In our arrival time, let's take the time from the previous truck arriving and add to that the time uh, between arrivals. Copy that all the way down. Uh, and start service time, that will actually be dependent on when the truck arrives and when the last truck before it, or the truck when the truck before it, sorry, uh, finished unloading. So I am going to do a maximum call. The larger of the two will win here. So it's a maximum between the arrival time of the current truck and the end service time of the truck before in the queue. We will copy that down. And if you will, you can change this to truck number if you would like. And start service, we could say start unload if we would like. And we could call this unload time also if we'd like. I tend to use a general template for all of the queuing problems. If you'd like, you can make it more specific to the problem at hand, though. So in this case, we have trucks arriving and they unload, and then um, they're able to leave once they're finished unloading. The unload times follow a normal distribution here. We're told that the average is nine minutes with a standard deviation of three minutes, and the minimum is one minute. So we are going to handle that with um, 
a norm.inf call. Now, because it's a truncated normal distribution, you're going to do the following, do a max call with the norm.inf. Lock the references here. Norm.inf on the 9 and the 3. Add a rand call to the front of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Do the maximum with that and our minimum time. We can then copy that formula down. And then next, the end unload will just be the start unload plus the unload time. So when the truck started unloading plus the time it took to unload. Notice this is a fairly simple example. Um, so we're not um, counting any time for the truck to get to the unloading bay. Um, there is no gap between um, when the previous truck finished unloading and the next one is able to start unloading. Um, so again, a fairly simple queuing problem here. Uh, they will get more complex over time, but this is a fairly simple one where we don't uh, have any time for the previous truck to clear out before the next truck starts unloading. Um, wait time, it will just be the difference between when the truck arrived and when it got to start unloading. So D5 minus C5 for this first truck. Copy that down. Note the first truck doesn't have to wait at all. Um, there's nobody in the queue before it. Q length, we're going to do a match call. We're looking for this truck number minus the match of the following. This is a bit of a funny one. We're going to match this arrival time uh, and we're going to look for it within the list of start unload times. Lock the first reference here to D5. And then don't lock the second one so we can scroll down as we go. And we want a less than, so we put in a one there. And that will count how many trucks are waiting before this one. So basically, once any one of these trucks arrive, how many are gonna be unloaded before it? Okay. And now we are able to uh, do some calculations here on our queue length, whether the system is empty, our cost per day, etc., etc., and then we'll run that uh, 200 times here. So the average queue length, we're just going to do an average of our queue length. Take an average of all of our queue lengths. The probability the system is empty, we're going to look at the queue and see if and when it is empty by doing a count call, sorry, a count if call. We're going to count how many times this queue length is zero. So how many times it's equal to zero. Okay, sorry, I'll move my cursor there. Um, and then to get a probability, because there are 100 trucks being simulated here, we're going to divide by the 100 to get the probability. So we're going to count how many times the queue length is 0, and then divide by 100 to get that probability. Server utilization is the opposite of that. It's 1 minus the probability the system is empty. And our average number of trucks in the system, this is an interesting one, is K18 plus K20 here. It's our average queue length plus the server utilization. From there, we can get our truck cost per day. Take our average number in the system. This is our average number of trucks in the system. Times it by the eight hours per day and times it by the $40 per hour per truck, and that will give us our truck cost per day. Crew cost, fairly simple. Three crew members at $11 an hour each times eight hours a day. Will give us our daily crew costs, which will give us a total cost of those two 
the truck and the crew costs added together. And if we want to simulate that cost per day, over 200 days, just set the first run uh, total cost to be that total cost. Go highlight those run numbers as well as that first total cost per day. What if analysis data table? Set your column to zero, or sorry, to a blank cell. Forgive me, your row to nothing. Click OK. We have just simulated 200 days, and we can get the average cost, average daily cost from those 200 days by doing an equals average. So we have $1,075.51 as our average cost per day uh, for running this unloading dock, given all of these um, numbers and constraints.